Hello, I'm Dr. Robert LaBelle. Today we'll be discussing low back pain and some of the associated disorders that go with low back pain. Low back pain is one of the most common conditions I see in practice every day. Low back pain is felt differently for everybody and research shows that the majority of people will experience a low back episode at some point in their life. Pain can be felt as a deep ache anywhere along the lower lumbar spine or it can be felt as a sharp jolting pain if you were bending over to tie up your shoes or pick up a pen. Like I said, it's quite variable. However, most low back pain does start as a deep ache and it starts very often lower down in the lumbar spine. This lower portion of the lumbar spine is a weak area in the lumbar spine. It carries all the load of the upper body and it's fulcrumed right on the hips. So this is the area that typically degenerates and develops chronic stiffness in, in this area. As we assess the low back at CCSR, we always assess the hip and the biomechanics down the leg to see how they relate into this area. Some of the muscles that are affected in the low back are the erector spinae muscles that go up and down the spine. These are the muscles that in the low back and hip video we will be showing ball work to. As well, we typically show ball work across the iliac crest or across the hip bone and that will end up dealing with a tight muscle we call the QL that runs sort of at a 45 degree angle. The last muscle group that usually causes low back and hip pain is the glute medius muscle. The hip sits up here and the glute medius muscle, so the hip musculature attaches all the way in there and we really want to get some ball work done into there because a lot of the knots to the top of the hip muscle are felt as back pain in here. Low back pain, if left for long enough, will develop quite a bit of stiffness to the musculature and as the muscles eventually end up stiffening, what they end up doing is they end up stiffening the joint and the joint, if it stays stiff long enough, will then contract. An analogy I very often give patients is a normal joint should be like a grape, it should move, it should be quite pliable and malleable. However, if due to poor biomechanics or overloading, such as if you were working out in the garden, your low back joint can really stiffen over time and the joint will actually become fibrotic. It will end up turning into a raisin. So it's no longer flexible, it can no longer expand properly. And this is the precursor to arthritis, uh, according to most research now. As the joint becomes stiff, the bones rub and subsequently the back starts to wear down. Treatment at CCSR is aimed at loosening up all this musculature uh, through soft tissue release such as active release, uh, a home ball therapy program that will help uh, manage the pain when you're outside of the office, as well as stretching the entire hip musculature including the glutes, hip flexors and hamstrings. As well, something we do very often is we manipulate the low back. Adjustments to the low back are aimed at releasing the joint capsular tension and thus returning it back to normal functioning. After we've done a lot of the release work in low back pain, we then shift our focus to core stabilization in the abdomen and in the glutes. Theory talks about when the abdomen and the glutes are strong, they will take the pressure out of the back and ultimately uh, the back won't develop as much stiffness as time goes on and thus supporting the back.